Hello, this is Jake Lee from Protocon, and I'm the team manager of the Protocon. In the previous video, John Myung San, our leader of the Protocon, explained us about what FIFI is. In the same content, I will explain you what blockchain fee is, and what's the problem that is occurring, and what FIFI can deliver to us. Everything in English this time, and hope. This will be a meaningful information to global members. So let's get this started. Inside Protocon is designed to explain the experience that project aims to solve, many of those challenges of blockchain, and introduce the new technological functions that Protocon is trying to bring up. This will be a series of episodes to introduce the each things we are preparing. And today, I'm going to explain in detail about fee financing. In short, FeeFi. Let's talk about why we need blockchain fee first. Blockchain is an expensive system. The hardware cost, network cost, the operation cost, and development cost are all required to maintain blockchain networks. Someone has to pay for this cost because it cannot be used for free. And blockchain uses at least 4 to 1,000 servers to maintain security. These servers are called nodes in blockchain. And again, someone has to pay for this operating the nodes. This means there is no free blockchain. Because blockchain is an expensive system and it's provided a limited resources. When someone uses a limited resources, they have to pay for it. Therefore, this explains the importance of the fee and why we need it in blockchain. There will be some questions here. Is it really necessary to pay a fee with tokens in blockchain? Or is, is this the only method for fee, fee payment? If the fee is not paid in token, is really a cryptocurrency necessary in blockchain? However, to begin with it, it is difficult to guarantee a blockchain, a reliable blockchain without the cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is essential to pay the commissions in blockchain. So why should we pay the fee with mainly token in blockchain? The blockchain is a self-contained and isolated system. And it provides a fairly high level of data reliability only for the data inside the blockchain and it provides a transparent and immutable functions that traditional digital data cannot offer. In other words, external payments cannot be accepted to maintain the consistency of the internal data. Because you know, car payments can cost errors during the payments. And sometimes like incorrect missing data could be awkward during the payments. If a blockchain accepts such external data, like those incorrect data, this could break the consistency of the internal data. That's why blockchain has to maintain its internal payment in a closed environment and this is how the trust can be maintained in the blockchain. Therefore, blockchain has a structure that organizes operating logic into algorithms and automatically executes it as a protocol. In private blockchain though, can be paid by a certain payment method. But in public blockchain is a global network, so everyone should be able to pay the fee. In public blockchain, you said yeah, certain me method, payment method can be accepted, but in public blockchain it can't because you know, it's in global network and global network means nodes are all dispersed globally, and since it's a global network, it is difficult to apply only one payment method from a specific country. For example, let's say. If I want to pay fees in dollars in order to use the public blockchain, but then whose bank account should I send it to? And it, there's too many unknown information to use a dollar for a payment. So it doesn't work this way. Let's say if you're trying to pay it with dollars to a Chinese node operators, the process becomes really, really complicated because first you have to exchange dollars to Wien, and then now you send the Wien to the node operator. And this takes a long time for the payment. Such payment if delayed that long, the system cannot function properly. 
So as a result, we have to operate on an internal fee payment system so that everyone can pay the fee. The reason why blockchain-based cryptocurrency industry grew first is because token are the easiest features to be provided by blockchain. It's the easiest data to handle blockchain and it fits perfectly with the consistency of the internal data. So how do you pay fees in blockchain? There are many ways in paying a fee in blockchain, but first of all, paying the fee with the key currency mainnet token. This was first created by Ethereum and is the most common way to pay fees. This includes a resource competition middle, uh, which means paying fees in proportion to using the network. It is structured to pay more if you want to boost your transaction faster. So that means if you want to have this transaction faster, try to send it to someone really fast, you have to pay more gas fee. But this has a side effect. Sometimes you have to just pay more and more to make your transaction faster. And this led to the moment when the Ethereum gas once reached more than $200 to, for payment. The second is the method by payment for mainnet resources. This method was proposed by EOS, in which resources are occupied on the mainnet at the cost. In other words, it costs a certain amount of money and takes some of the portion of the resource of the network. This means that you use the mainnet resource with the resource that you occupy. In this case, the user point of view, the fee is free because the operator already purchased the resources and they're ready to provide it without cost. And if you and I started buying network resources, let's say we have 100% share, but someone has to pay more to occupy more resources. There's a competition to buy more resources, right? As they compete for more resources, they could, uh, they actually face increasingly expensive consequences as a resource competition model went to extremes and the attempts to solve the problems of fee actually resulted in a, another problem. The third way, let's say, the payment of fee by proxy. You know, the, due to the complexity of the fee problem, there's also a way to pay the fee instead of someone. So it's a way of paying fees on behalf of users. Users can use the service without knowing there are fees. It's like an example when users got their clay for airdrop with Clip Wallet from Clayton. And no one has to worry about the fee because the fee was already paid. However, this approach is difficult to sustain because someone has to keep paying for the operation costs. It is suitable for temporary marketing purposes but not su sustainable for long term. And there are cases where fees are provided free of charge. In this case, the service provider buys the resources of the private blockchain and provides a service. For a user, the fee, the service is provided free of charge without worrying about the fees. But however, this structure is only possible in private blockchain, not in public. If you're interested in the protocol, please like and subscribe.